Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mikpato and this is Mikpato PC. And today I'm bringing you part two of my two-part series, which is an in-depth analysis of PCI Express riser cable and the performance. Uh, part one compared PCI riser cables to directly installing your GPU into your motherboard. Uh, so if you're wanting to vertically mount your GPU, you'll need a riser cable. I looked at whether or not you lose performance when doing that. Uh, I don't want to spoil part one, obviously. The numbers are very good in favor of using a PCI Express riser cable. There are a few other considerations that I bring up at the end of that video as well. Uh, so depending on your case and so on, it might still not be the best option for you. But um, definitely if you want to have a look at that, I'll put a card up here somewhere you guys can click on and check out part one. I'll also put a video uh, clickable link at the end of this video that you can click on and go directly to part one. Uh, this however is part two and in this part we're going to be comparing two PCI Express riser cables. One from Thermaltake, which I'll put on the screen right now. And our second cable, which I refer to as the cheap PCI Express riser cable, and I use the term uh, lightly, it doesn't necessarily mean it's built poorly, it just means that it is inexpensive. Literally, it's a quarter of the price of the other one. It's $10, the thermal take is $40. But anyway, here is the $10 cable that I'll be comparing to the thermal take cable. With the introductions out of the way, uh, let's dive right into some numbers. And I will tell you guys that uh, there's more to this story than the numbers alone. So please stay tuned until the end of the video. Following the charts, I'll get into some of the issues I had and the concerns that I would have buying this cheap cable as opposed to the thermal take. Okay, so here we have our first five tests. They are synthetic tests and uh, clearly labeled there we got the thermal take riser cable on the left and the cheap riser cable on the right and overall you can see that everything is well within the margin of error or very close to the margin of error and uh, basically there's not really any concerns here so we'll move along to the gaming benchmarks so here we have the gaming tests that i ran uh, i ran seven tests in total the number closest to the title of the game in question is your average FPS. So on the left side, for example, Assassin's Creed Origins has 56 as the average. The number next to that is the maximum FPS followed by the minimum FPS to the far left. And on the cheap riser cable side, it's just the same. Uh, so we got the 58 as our average, 101 is our maximum and 27 is our minimum. Moving down the line, you can see that everything looks uh, to be within the margin of error until we get to Metro Last Light. Okay, so with the charts out of the way, uh, one thing that I think stands out to you guys as well as to me, and that was the, the minimum frame rate for Metro Last Light. Uh, less than 1 FPS, 0.66 FPS. And I wondered what uh, what the issue was there. If you compare the thermal take cable to the motherboard, very similar minimum FPS. Uh, however, this one stands out. So let's have a look at the frame rate. I ran three. I always run three uh, benchmarks for every test, and then I average out the numbers. Uh, so that's how I come up with my figures. And as you'll see in these charts, uh, 0 0.66, 0 0.67, and 0.66, I believe, are the three minimum FPS for the uh, for this guy. So let's look at the frame times, and then uh, we'll get into some more information. So what we're looking at here is the three game runs or benchmark runs for Metro Last Light on the Thermal Take cable. You can see that while there are some dips. Uh, it did maintain a minimum frame rate of nearly 11 FPS in the first run, 17 FPS in the second, and 28 
in the third. Now let's have a look at the cheap cable and see the difference in frame times. So clearly here we have a difference. You can see the white going down almost all the way to the bottom of the chart in all three of the benchmark runs with uh, minimum frame rates of less than 1% in the three runs. So that's pretty concerning actually. You'll note that the maximum FPS is higher as well as compared to the thermal take. I don't know if there's a bit of a slingshot effect. When it dips very, very low, it comes back and spikes up. Uh, but you can see that those maximum FPS were very, very brief and I uh, would not say representative of the experience you should expect. Uh, it is also worth noting that there was visible stutter while the benchmark was running using the cheap cable. So that could potentially affect your games. The second thing I, I would like to point out, and there's a couple here um, guys, is that this cable is a little bit too short. So I'll put a picture up right now comparing its length to the thermal take, which is 200 millimeters. This guy is 140 millimeters in length. So as you can see, it's, it's shorter and it's just annoyingly shorter because it doesn't reach, in my case anyway, it doesn't reach any of the PCI Express slots uh, at least not the by 16 I have two by 16 slots it won't reach either one of them so I'd have to use this in a by 8 which sounds like a good idea for a video actually I'll probably be doing that testing the performance of my Vega 64 in by 8 and by 16 to see if there's any loss of performance uh, but anyway that aside I wouldn't really want to run it without doing those tests and knowing that I'm not losing performance, I'd hate to plug this into my my by 8 uh, PCI Express slot and lose performance. So for $10, I'd rather not. I'd, I'd pay the 2039 or whatever and get the thermal take cable. Uh, the other thing, with it being so short, there's no, there's no clip on the back here. So it constantly seemed to be pulling out of the motherboard just enough and that caused a variety of issues uh, one error I have an ASUS motherboard and I I got uh, code 62 and code 96 many times in my uh, attempts to test this cable uh, I did end up moving it to a different PCI Express slot the second uh, by 16 and those seemed to go away probably it was pulling less on it and that seemed to fix the problem but again it doesn't stay there's no clip to lock it in so that's a problem uh, I'll show you guys also I got a couple blue screens of death from Windows and I'll put that up right now so that's the error I was getting with Windows using this cable and only this cable I'd say I got that error probably four or five times in the course of my testing. Again, that seemed to be resolved when I moved it to another PCI Express slot. And uh, overall, the build quality is decent. I mean, you can see that they saved some money by putting just blue tape over the solder points up here or the connection. Uh, it does say Bitcoin and Litecoin on it, so I think these are probably meant for the mining market, although I can't 100% uh, confirm that. It's a little bit overkill for mining. It's by 16. It says right on here, PCI Express by 16. So, I mean, that suggests it's aimed at gamers, but um, the Bitcoin and Litecoin here kind of... Sorry, gamers for the by 16, but these labels here suggest that it's sort of aimed at game, uh, miners, as does the low cost. Uh, there is a locking mechanism at the top here. It slides back and then you just slide it forward. Nothing really keeps it locked in. Uh, there's a bit of a click there. So for testing, I ended up just plugging it in and my card was sort of laying on. I, I made up a platform and the card was laying on the platform. 
but um, the length was a concern. The massive dips in uh, Metro Last Light were a concern, and the error codes and blue screen of death were a concern. Uh, so my verdict on this guy would be that while it looks nice, it's I mean color wise not really, but it is built decently. It's not like cheap cheap you know garbage. Um, I think there is obviously a few issues that might be very annoying such as the error codes and the blue screen of death and the short length. Uh, so for those reasons I don't recommend this cable to anyone for any reason. Uh, but that's that's gonna end the in-depth analysis of the part 2 PCI Express cables. Uh, so if you guys are in the market I would recommend buying a thermal take or equivalent part from uh, you know Asus or uh, NZXT or whoever it is a name brand company um, and you know make sure it's long enough and shielded and you should be fine as shown in part one thanks again for tuning in guys I will be bringing another video shortly with a huge announcement for Big Pato PC I guess huge might be an overstatement a big announcement and uh, it will affect the entire channel moving forward so but for for good for good uh, but yeah thanks again we'll see you guys soon have a great day bye bye